Hey everyone, my name is Marcus Felling. I am the PM for Playwright. Um, and today I'm gonna to be talking about testing modern web apps with Playwright. So this is the agenda for today. Um, I'll start out with an intro to Playwright if you haven't heard of it, how to get started, authoring tests using selectors, actions, and assertions. Um, and then I'll go through some tooling we have available for debugging tests. And then finally, I will demo all of the above. So Playwright's a relatively new open source cross-browser automation framework uh, for end-to-end -end testing. Um, it is developed and maintained by Microsoft. Um, it tests across all modern browsers, um, and it's designed to be a framework that solves the needs of testing today's modern web apps. Um, Playwright's grown like crazy since its first stable release just back in May of 2020. Um, it now has almost 37,000 stars on GitHub, around 200 contributors, um, and we've had um, 67 releases so far. Um, there are Playwright libraries available for JavaScript and TypeScript, Python, .NET, uh, and Java. Um, so you can pick the language that you're most comfortable with. You can find all of our documentation out on playwright.dev. On GitHub, you can find the source code, bugs, issues. Um, follow us on Twitter and go check out our YouTube channel to see our awesome release videos. So this is an illustration created by one of our uh, dev advocates. It does a really good job of um, introducing Playwright. Um, I'll kind of just go through the, the highlights here. Um, so Playwright is built for the dynamic modern web, and it has features like auto-weighting and web-first assertions, so you don't need to worry about writing flaky tests. Um, it's aligned with modern browser architecture and runs tests out of process which means it supports multi-tab, multi-origin and domain, uh, as well as multi-user testing scenarios. Uh, Playwright creates what we call a browser context for each test, which is equivalent to a brand new browser profile. Um, and this delivers full test isolation with really zero overhead. So creating a new browser context only takes a handful of milliseconds. Very cheap and quick to create. It also comes with some pretty great tooling, uh, CodeGen to automatically generate scripts based on actions, uh, Inspector to debug and step through tests, and a Trace Viewer that captures all the information needed to investigate test failures. Uh, we also have a pretty sweet new VS Code extension, which I'll be demoing here in a bit. All right, so let's talk about how you can actually get started. Um, today, I'm gonna to be talking about Playwright Test, our official uh, first party test runner. And I'll be using TypeScript for uh, most of my examples here. Um, so these steps will differ if you're using a different language binding like .NET, Java, or Python, uh, or an alternative test runner like Jest or Mocha. So the easiest way to get started, go install the VS Code extension. And then there is an install playwright command palette command that will create everything you need to get started, including browsers and an example test script. So playwright comes with the ability to generate tests out of the box. In the GIF, you can see I have the site I want to test on the right. And as I click around, it spits out the generated code in a new test file on the left. So you can kick this off using the record button in the VS Code extension, uh, or you can choose to run it from our CLI. Um, there's a bunch of configurations to execute tests. So running NPX Playwright test will run all the tests in the working directory, or you can point it to a single test file or group. Um, by default, each test will run in parallel using what we call worker processes uh, for each available CPU core. Uh, with the VS Code extension, you can run tests with a single click. Um, you can set breakpoints and then step through your test to debug. So rather than adding test case specific configurations in each test case, uh, we can use a global configuration file to help us set smart defaults across our tests. 
Um, in this file, you can set options to do things like record a video, record a trace, take screenshots, um, launch a web server before you run tests. Um, you can emulate different devices, latest iPhone or Android device. Um, you can also emulate locales or time zones, um, as well as a bunch of different network configurations. All right, so let's talk about authoring tests. So in every script we write, we'll start by navigating to a page, then waiting for something to happen. So in the first screenshot, we go to example.com. We wait for text on the page that says example domain, and then we click it. Similarly, in the second screenshot, we're waiting for login text to appear. We're clicking it. We're waiting for the username element and then filling it with John Doe. Quick tip, rather than hard coding the URL, every time in your page.go to, you can set the value for base URL in that global config file that I mentioned, uh, or you can even go a step further and set it as an environment variable. So selectors are what you use to point to certain elements on a page, and then you use them to perform actions like clicking and filling. So there's a bunch of selector engines available. You can use simple text, you can use CSS, you can use XPath, Nthmatch, uh, React, and Vue. Um, and then you can even combine all these various selectors um, together as well. Uh, but a good, a good practice is to prioritize user-facing attributes that only cha change rarely, such as text content. Um, that way, these attributes aren't impacted by DOM structure changes that can really make tests fragile. So Playwright Test uses the Jest expect library for its assertions. Um, there's a bunch of matchers like to equal and to match. Um, the example assertion verifies um, a bunch of menu items. So Playwright Test will retest the node with the menu list until the fetch node has the text of each menu item. So it'll refetch the node, checking it over and over until the condition is met or until a timeout is reached. And you can configure the timeout, but by default uh, for assertions, it's gonna be five seconds. Playwright uh, Trace Viewer is a GUI tool that helps troubleshooting test runs in a post-mortem manner. So this works really great for troubleshooting and reproducing failed uh, continuous integration tests. Uh, you can hover over the timeline at the top and see the associated DOM snapshots uh, along with detailed action logs. Um, you can configure your tests to always produce the trace, uh, only on failures or only on retries. You can disable it completely, just depending on your preference. So in VS Code, you can right-click and start uh, breakpoint debugging. So when your cursor is on an action or a locator, um, the corresponding elements are then highlighted in the headed browser that gets launched. Playwright test comes with a few built-in reporters um, that show detailed information about failures um, and mostly just differ in, in verbosity. Um, by default, it will use the HTML report which produces a self-contained folder for the, the test run uh, that can be served up as a web page. So in the bottom left screenshot, I can see all of my tests, their status of pass, fail, flaky, or skipped, uh, the browser they ran against, um, and then the amount of time that each took to run. On the right screenshot, I can drill into a test to see all the steps that ran, detailed action logs, and then at the bottom, I'll see artifacts that are included, um, such as the trace screenshots or videos. All right, next up, I'm going to demo um, starting from scratch. So here I have an MVP summit folder. It is currently empty. The best way to get started is using that install command that I mentioned. So I'll open the command palette and use this first install playwright command. And then I can choose the browsers that I want to test against. Um, 
And I can also add a GitHub action. So this will add a package JSON file if I don't already have one, uh, along with a dev dependency for Playwright test library. Um, and then it installs the browsers, which I just specified will be Chrome, Firefox, or Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit. So here in the left-hand side, I can see all these files that were spit out up top. We have that GitHub action. So in here, I can publish this or, or push this to a Git, GitHub repo, and it will know how to discover and execute my tests with GitHub actions. And down here, we have a test folder with an example test included. So this is running tests for our hosted version of to do MVC. Right up here, um, which is just a site that helps you pick an MVC framework. Um, and we're just we're hosting it ourselves here at demo playwright.dev. Um, so the step to navigate to the site will run before each test case below. That way we only need to define it in one place. And then if I scroll down, we have groups of tests and they really help organize our tests. So we have a group up here called new to do. And then within it, we have a bunch of test cases. So inside the test cases, we have actions that wait for elements to be actionable and web first assertions that wait for and retry until certain conditions are met. And the combination of actions and assertions are, are what allow us to create these very resilient tests and eliminate flakiness. On line 16, we're taking the action of filling and telling it where to fill using a CSS selector for our locator. So this is using the CSS new to do class. And the locator is um, basically just a way to find elements on the page at any moment. So after we're filling, we're pressing enter. And then on line 20, we're making the assertion to have text. So I mentioned Playwright test uses the just expect library. And if I look at my IntelliSense here, there's a whole bunch of matchers that we can use. So that's the basics. I already have um, I already have the extension installed. So um, I can run these tests just with a simple click. And then um, as this test runs, you can see on the right hand side, there are timestamp decorators to help me easily identify any steps that um, that maybe took longer than expected. Um, good way to help troubleshoot. So that just ran in um, what's called headless mode, which can be tricky to troubleshoot if there's a failure. Um, so let's use debug mode next. So I'm gonna set a breakpoint on line 16, and then I can right click and debug this same test. And I have multiple monitors open over here. So I'm gonna rearrange my desktop. And that launched a headed browser. And now it's waiting on the breakpoint for me. So at this point, I can continue to step through my test or I can use a feature what we call the selector playground. So real time, I can play around with my selectors. And then the associated selector is gonna highlight that um, the, the um, the selector on the in the headed browser. So if I want to change this to say the entire body for my test, I can do that. Um, but I'm going to stick with the new to do CSS class. But that works really good for troubleshooting. And then I can kind of step through this test line by line to to debug. So that's that's debugging. I'm going to close this out. And next up, I'm gonna look at that HTML reporter. So if we open up that global config file, 
I won't go through all of this, but within here, you can see the default reporter is HTML. And then the default for tracing is if the test has to retry, then it's going to start recording the trace on the second retry. But I'm, for demo purposes, I'm going to just have tracing always be on here. And then at the bottom, I have a bunch of projects, one for each browser. Within the devices, I have that emulation that I mentioned. So I can test across various uh, viewports on, say, like the latest iPhone or Android device. Um, but for now, I'm just going to use desktop Chrome. So if I'm going to run this test in, in CICD, I'll be at the command line. And I will run npx playwright test. And then I'm just going to run this one test group called new to do. And so my, my pipeline would be executing the CLI to run my tests. Cool, so those tests just passed. If I did have a failure, it would automatically open this report, but I'm going to run it for demo purposes and it's hosting it locally, but this is a full on you know, site that I can choose to host wherever. I can drill in, see all the test steps, but if that's not enough, I can dig into my trace file. So on the left-hand side, we have actions. And as I click through each test step, in the middle here, I have the associated DOM snapshot. So this page.go to, before we took that action, there was nothing there. After, this is what the test saw. And then on the right-hand side, or I could even keep going here and you can see each test step gets highlighted. And then on the right-hand side, we have some of the functionality available in, in DevTools. I have a, a log to understand everything that Playwright's doing. I can see my council. I can see all the network requests. And I can also see the underlying test script. So if I passed off this trace to my teammate, maybe they don't know um, what the test is or what I'm trying to accomplish, they can just look at the source code right within the trace file. All right, cool. So that's HTML reporter and the trace viewer. Last, I'm going to talk about code gen and recording a new test. So there's this record button here. I'll press that. And then again, similar to the debugging experience, it's going to launch a new browser window. And now I can simulate what I want my test to look like. So if I github.com, go to the Microsoft org, my test is going to GitHub, Microsoft org, scrolling down, searching for the Playwright repo, clicking on it. You can see as I'm taking all of these actions, it's spit out the test script for me. So I don't need to write anything. I mean, I'll probably want to rework this, clean it up a little bit. Um, but that gives me a good, good starting point for, for creating my first test. So now I have the example test that was included, as well as my new test script here. All right, so that's all for the demo. You can finish just with a final slide of, of resources here. Go to playwright.dev to get started. There's a good getting started guide. Uh, submit a bug or ask a question at our GitHub repo. And follow us uh, for updates on Twitter our YouTube channel. Um, we release on typically a monthly cadence. So we'll have a 
a release video with every release highlighting features, uh, that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, that's all for today. Happy testing.